All right, we got a battle with Fear Bottle versus uh, Anryukso. Pretty sure that's how you say it. Uh, okay, Beer starts off stating his stats and how he's going to be rating things. That's good. Helps you understand what's going on when you read it. <coughs> um, here's the map, by the way, that Larcy posted. And Beer says he's on the right, so this is that red X on the right. Beer had once again been forced to drop every ball he has been struggling to keep in the air, pack up, and go to some remote island to fight. Looking at the birds and the bees, the flowers and the trees, Beer had a chuckle. <laughs> Even the landscape gives me deja vu. It's different, but also familiar. Thinking about familiar, haven't I met that one on the other side? I'm sure I have. Doesn't matter. I'll find out soon enough. Beer started a fast run towards the trees to his left, growing quite fond of this trick. Once he was among the trees, he found a big sturdy one and climbed up it. Okay, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to say it seems like he's doing too many actions per turn. Like if we go back up to where we see him, I think... So it's supposed to be 100 meters uh, in diameter, right? So that means from where he is to get to the trees, and it's a, probably about uh, maybe 25 to 33 meters or something. So it's like a fair distance to move. <clears throat> I think it's fine if he was going to say he started to run towards the trees, right? That's like one action per his one turn. But doing this second action, like getting among the trees and climbing it, I think that should be another turn or another action. I think he should give his opponent some time to see what he's doing at this point and not just do another action right away. Okay, so when he'd reached a sufficient height, he planted himself on the tree branch, pulled out his sword, and started to grab branches in every direction. Then by using his sword, Beer started to sharpen small pencil-like sticks, that was interesting, which he would later use if it was necessary. So this is cool. Right away he's starting to come up with some kind of strategy using uh, the environment around him. And I don't think anybody's really used the trees. I know some people have used like fruits, like the banana, <clears throat> in their fight, but I don't think anybody uses the tree itself, so this is pretty cool. I think that's creative. Um, did I have any problems with the first part? I think the first part's good. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So his er oh yeah, yeah okay. So the original opponent forfeited. So now we have uh, Anaryuk. So okay. So he's got his character stuff on the bottom here. Bubbles. He's a humandrel. Be cool if he showed a little bit. Actually, did. It'd be cool if both these guys talked a little bit about their characters' personalities in their spoiler, but that's okay. You don't have to, I don't think. Uh, Alright, so he doesn't say how... Bubbles doesn't say how he's going to be writing this, so it might be a little bit confusing to read at first. <clears throat> like, if you look at what Beer wrote, he's like, okay, if I have it in quotations, that's talking. Bold, that's me thinking. Actions are italic, narration is normal. So, I'm not really sure. We'll have to just figure it out. <clears throat> okay, if my information is correct, my bounty is on these. My bounty is on this stupid island. Yeah, that was just a little confusing to read. Okay, so if my information is correct, my bounty is on this stupid island. But where on the island? I have no idea. Fan freaking tastic. What am I supposed to do now? Just hope I run into him. What, there's somebody else here? If I remember correctly, these islands. Yeah, wait. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna say this is like, this is a run on sentence right away. It's, it's kind of hard to read. You should try to put some periods in. Uh, I'm getting stumbled because of that. I don't really know where I'm supposed to stop. Uh, so, okay, I'm gonna go back from here. Uh, I suppose, yeah. Oh, what am I supposed to do now? Just hope I run into him? That could be like a period. Uh, and then he says, what, there's someone else here, if I remember correctly. 
uh, these islands or this island, I'm not really sure, is uninhabited. So that means for two minutes later, he must be the man I'm searching for. Does he look familiar to uh, for? Oh, he does look familiar. Too bad. I accidentally burned the wanted poster, but there's only one way to find out for sure. All right, so this is uh, definitely uh, Bubbles thinking. That's what the bold is. Uh, definitely would like it if he checked for grammar. It's kind of hard to read because of that, but I think I understand what he's trying to say. So he's like a bounty hunter and he's looking for his bounty. That's why he says my bounty's on this stupid island. And uh, he notices that Beer's here, but he doesn't know if it's his bounty because he burnt the poster, which I think is pretty, that's pretty clever. Uh, and then, okay, so now him talking is probably the unbolded stuff. He says, hey guy sitting over there, are you my bounty? So I'm gonna beat you up and collect the reward. All right, Beer gives his stats again. That could be helpful in case we forget. So, Beer was sitting in the tree, pleased with himself that he managed to make some extra weapons. It's all very pleasant and tranquil experience. Two baths to fight to the death, though it is what it is. So okay, so now uh, Bubbles asks him, are you, are you my bounty? I'm gonna collect the reward. Hearing this, Beer was quite confused. How the hell did this guy see me here? He must be quite good. Well, I've got no idea if I'm your bounty or not. I'm a revolutionary though. Do you want my head? <laughs> Okay, probably is the guy I'm searching for, and he did just say that he's part of the Revolutionary Army, so that means there probably is a bounty on him, even if he's not the guy. Oh, yes I am, now get down from that tree and fight me like a man, while saying, oh, okay, so this is two different sentences, and not only that, but it should be him talking and then him doing an action, but there's no thing, there's nothing to distinguish that, right? So you should have put the quotation mark when you're done and then like change the style of this and like maybe made it a separate paragraph or at least at least had a period in the quotation mark so he says yes i am now get down from that tree and find me like a man and then while saying that i draw my swords so now he's taking out his swords so after hearing that beer had to laugh <laughs> and why if i may ask do you want my head and if you want it, you can get your ass over here and try to claim it yourself. I'm not coming down from here right now. I like it here. Maybe I'll build a treehouse and live here. That sounds nice, doesn't it? I like the treehouse. He's got one sword just like me, and I'm guessing he may have similar attacks. I know very well that I'm not unique in my fighting style. Is that the same birds I've been seeing here since the last time? That can't be right, can it? Okay, so I would have liked if he, if there was some kind of narrator action or like uh, non, non beer in his head thinking action that like showed what was going on between him thinking about the fighting style and the birds because it kind of seems like abrupt. Like, why is he talking about birds all of a sudden? Because uh, I don't think Anryukso mentioned it. Yeah, so he should have said like, okay, some birds flew by. Which is something simple. Then he could have said, okay, uh, is that this? Because she should have said, are those the same birds I've been searching here since last time? <clears throat> okay, so feeling confused about the birds, but quite confident in his own battle prowess, Beer continued sitting in the tree and smirked at his enemy. Uh, four hours. Okay, so maybe he took a little too long to respond. All right, if that's what you want, I'll chop down the tree. I'll, I'll chop. Oh, I'll chop your tree down. So, Bubbles swings his sword at the direction of the tree, sending... Sending launching. You don't need both of those. Uh, I, sw I swing my sword at the direction of the tree, launching an air-compressed projectile, attempting to chop the tree down. That's fine. Uh, okay. It's just a little confusing to read again. What a rude bastard. I like this tree. Beer is grumbling to himself. Because oh, it's more like... What a rude bastard. I love this tree. <laughs> uh, so it's grumbling to himself as he watched the wind slash fly towards the tree. I should probably take some sticks with me then. I like how you say he's grumbling. It makes me kind of read it in a different way. Uh, okay, so having decided such, Beer hit around eight sharp sticks in different places in his clothing. Okay, I would have liked if you said the size of the sticks, because sticks could be like a variety of different sizes, so... 
I guess they're just small enough to, f to hide in your clothing. So not too big. Uh, he couldn't fit anymore. He also made sure to sheath his sword. Having done that, he watched lazily at the wind slash. Oh, as the wind slash reached the tree, and blasted a sizable chunk out of it. The tree swayed dangerously, and then something broke, and the tree tilted forward. Down we go then. Yippee. Oh wait. <laughs> Down we go then. Yippee. No, I really wanted to build that tree house. <laughs> yeah, same, bro. Beer wasn't worried at all. A fall like this was nothing, and if he timed it right, which he would, he would just jump off the tree before it hit the ground. And perfectly safe and sound. It's a, so planned, so done. The beer almost slipped when he jumped. It's always something that almost goes wrong. Am I cursed? Uh, is my life just a sick game to some sadistic bastard? That could have been two question marks, two sentences. I, I got stumbled there because it didn't end. The sentence didn't end. Finally down on the ground, Beer once again unsheathed the sword and held it in his right hand and started to walk towards his adversary. I think here again you should have given your opponent some time before you did a second action. Oh, hey Mandrill, is it? He's not, that could have been a question. He's not the same one that I saw in the battle against the Larsa the Giant. I wonder if this guy is just as weird. Oh, I am down now. Come kill me if you can. Having said that, Beer let his bloodlust ooze out of him. Oh yeah, that's a good description. I like the ooze. It's a good visual. Finally, a strong opponent. I don't even care if this guy... I don't even care if he is the guy, I think it's supposed to say. I don't even care if he's the guy I want. This is going to be fun. I keep saying these is going to be fun. Say, I'm not sure if that's like a quirk for your character. That's kind of confusing to read. These is going to be fun. Maybe, maybe it is a quirk. Maybe he's saying... <laughs> maybe he's saying, I don't care if it's the guy I want. This is going to be fun. Maybe it's just an accent thing. Oh, right. That what I'm... T oh, right. That what I'm talking about. Oh, that's... What All right. That what I'm... Okay, maybe it's an... I'm not, sure. I'm not sure if it's like bad spelling or if it's an accent thing. All right. That what I'm talking about. Let's do these. <laughs> maybe it's just an accent thing. That's, that's funny. I quickly close the distance between us and attempt to attack him directly. Uh, you should say how you're going to attack him directly. But like, you can't just say I'm going to attack him directly. It doesn't really give your opponent the ability to react to that because he doesn't really know how you're attacking him directly or where you're attacking. You should, you should try to say that. <clears throat> so Beer says, Beer watched the human angel run towards him, both swords swinging in an attack. Okay, so yeah, he's just kind of having to make up how you're attacking. Uh, I'll have to be careful of the other sword. Beer blocked the attack with his lone sword out in front of him. At first he used his strength to hold his ground, then suddenly he let himself be pushed backwards, jumping to create some extra distance. That done, it should have been a period. No, it's kind of like a round sentence now, it's a little confusing. So extra distance, period. That done, Beer lifted his sword high in the air, then chopped down, creating a vertical line of air uh, that shot out in front of him, intending to hit the humanitarian in the middle of the torso. Yeah, so um, for Anryuk, so if you see when Beer's attacking, he's saying where he's attacking you. He's not just saying that he's attacking. You know, you gotta give like a spot and like a how he's doing it. He's saying how he's attacking too. And then he's he's saying the attack he's using is uh, Yakodori. It's got C D P R. Then Beer started to skip backwards, never letting the command out of his sight, but okay, yeah, yeah, Beer, a lot of times you're just doing a couple, like an extra action at the end of when you should be doing something, right? Like, if you're, if you're already up in the air, and then you're doing an action chopping down, you, you kind of got to assume that your opponent might do something about it before you start running away, right? You could say like, okay, Beer was falling and then he's planning to run away, but you shouldn't really say that he's already doing this other thing. It's kind of like an, it's, it, you know how there's like an auto hit that Larcy doesn't like? It's kind of like that, but it's like an auto, an auto escape. Seeing the projectile fly at me, I quickly dodge it by jumping to the sky while airborne. I swing my swords at Beer. So, okay, so he's swinging the swords and from the swords 
two air based projectiles are sent diagonally down, one from the left and the second from the right. While I fall, I swing my swords down at beer, the gravity complementing the force of my attack. Okay, so that's, that's some good strategy using the gravity. So, I think that's fine. It's kind of like all in one motion, I guess. So, from this, you can kind of see beer how starting to skip backwards and not only the human angel of his sight disappearing into the trees is kind of problematic because now uh, Bubbles is saying that like after you attack him he's counterattacking right away so now you're getting back into the trees thing doesn't make as much sense as the human angel's attack came rushing downwards Beer was still skipping backwards and was at the edge of the woods okay so yeah so now you're just getting to the woods instead of actually being in them like you were going to Trying to chain and attack together to take me out, eh? Sorry, I'm tired of getting cut. Reaching the trees, Beer turned around and ran up a small, sturdy tree. Behind him, at the foot of the tree, the enemy's airborne attack landed and blew up the ground. The tree did the same as the earlier companion and started to tilt forward. Beer was already reaching the top and used a branch to kick off from the tree, jumping into the air. He was now above the humandril, right? Who had almost landed on the ground. So it's a little weird because uh, Bubbles was saying he was going to attack from landing on the ground, but Beer like ran away. So you can see how you're running away kind of made it a little confusing for the whole situation. Making use of the opportunity, Beer lifted his sword and held it horizontally over his shoulder. And borrowing the momentum he got from jumping from the already falling tree, sliced the air once again. Uh, I don't know if the momentum from jumping off the tree would help you slice the air since you're going in maybe because you're going in opposite directions it might but like you're not jumping off the tree with your arms if anything it would make it so you can't really use the rest of your body to attack the air it'd just be your arm okay so though this time it wasn't Yakudiri no this time it was something similar but different all the same so the attack is Sanjiroku Panto. Okay, so same DBR, but what's the difference? I think this is just the one sword style, right? Instead of two sword style. No, because he only has one sword. Uh, one sword. Circular motion. Yeah, it's just a similar type of thing, I guess. Beer smirked as his attack freed itself from his blade. That's a cool way to describe it. Winding downwards in an air slash that was intended to hit the mandrel in the neck and back. I don't really understand how you're facing his back since he was kind of running at you but maybe you're just so high up that you could see it but if you were that high you should have hit his head and his back would not be facing you but we'll just say that his back isn't it is facing you for this situation the attack made beer feel some fatigue as his body continued to spiral while he fell through the air towards the ground so bubbles just landing now not having enough time to dodge the attack, to dogs the attack, <laughs> I turned towards it mid-flight and crossed my swords to block it as I managed, oh, that should, that's a run-on sentence, I'm getting confused. So I crossed my swords to block it, period. I managed to block it, but I get slightly cratered into the ground, ooh, that's an interesting way to describe it. When I land on my back, I get up slightly tired, but mostly angry. I look at beer. I knew you could put up a good fight, and I'm not disappointed, but that's enough for the warm-up. Now it's time for the real fight. I quickly start sprinting, firing rocks from the debris at Beer. Okay, so the impact in the crater, and there's some rocks on the ground. You should have said, like, the crater made some rocks and stuff like that, because that's kind of like where the rock's coming from. Uh, so he's firing some rocks, and then he starts running, pretty much. Beer is still spinning through the air. He couldn't even get his bearings. Everything was blurry around him. And he could bile in the back of his. He could feel bile in the back of his throat, should be another word. This might not have been my greatest idea. Wham! Deer smacked into the ground hard, having the air knocked out of his lungs. Luckily, his swords didn't injure him. Yeah, I'd hope so. If you're a good swordsman, I don't think they should have. While Beer was busy trying to draw in a breath, his opponent started to talk. And he could put up a good fight, I'm not disappointed. Enough of the world, time for a fight. Beer, still disoriented, could only half mutter. <laughs> Alright, that's good. Makes sense for what just happened. What? 
Just as Beer looked back behind him, a stone flew smack into his forehead. Ow. That hurts, you bastard. Blood started to seep down, and once and one could argue that this was the moment Beer had started seeing red. Jumping to his feet, Beer started to weave in and out of the way of the incoming projectiles. One stone to his forehead was enough for the young revolutionary. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's like, I've had enough. I don't want any more of this. Uh, jumping, turning, sidestepping. Beer had to do it all. Sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. At one point, Beer... At one point, Beer decided on his next attack. Alright, this is getting really confusing. There's way too many commas here, man. There's like six commas. You gotta put some periods here. <clears throat> At one point, Beer decided on his next attack. Sheathed the sword, and while still holding his sword... While still holding sword handle... His sword handle... He started to... You're missing some words here. It's kind of getting confusing. <clears throat> and while still holding onto his sword handle, he started to avoid stones and other debris with a movement that looked closer to dancing oh, okay, than anything else. Interesting. Because he wasn't lifting his feet, he was sliding on them on the ground, perooting out of the way with only a millimeter of clearance. When he decided he was close enough... Okay, well, so let me just check on your stats for a second. Reaction 22. Alright. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so look closer to dancing. He's, okay, so perooting out of the way with only a millimeter clearance. When he decided he was close enough to risk a few bruises, he started to run towards the human drill. Tend to an, okay, so the human is running towards you also, though. So if, you're, if you've been dodging all these rocks this whole time, you guys should be pretty close now. Intending to unsheath the deadly blow that would go diagonally from the opponent's left hip up to his right shoulder. That's a good description of the attack. Then Beer was almost upon his opponent, his sword flying out of his scabbard. The attack. Uh, Shishi Sunsong. Okay. Bull says, I barely have enough time to react to Beer's attack. Managed to block his at with my own swords. Oh, I'm getting confused. Managed to block his... So he's managing to block it, Beer's attack with his own swords, and then they spark when they meet with his swords. Oh, with my own sword. Okay, yeah. To block with my own swords, and they spark to meet with our swords. Clashing, I step back to make the distance between us. I do a downward pound into Beer with both swords. I should say you attempt to do a downward pound. Beer's like, okay, I failed, huh? Beer saw his adversary block, then dodge backwards, only to come forward once again as the swords came from above. Beer sidestepped to the left, dodging, reversing the grip of his sword, and attempting to do a horizontal slice to the commander's face. Yeah, that makes sense, because if he's if he's jumping down at you, his face will be lower. At the same time, he shook out one of the sharps shook out. He shook out one of the sharp sticks he'd sharpened earlier. That <laughs> tongue twister from his left sleeve. He held in his left hand, I guess, with the sharp end pointing upwards. No matter how much I try, I'm unable to fully dodge the attack, and I get cut at the end of my ear, losing some skin and having some blood dripping from it. So I guess he's just trying to move his face out of the way. Uh, losing some blood dripping from it. I make a slide to the left and send one projectile sword slash at him. So they're both going left to each other, so kind of going like a little circle now. Then one projectile sword slash at him at close range, and then start spinning my swords like a windmill to knock him off his feet. So I'm, I'm I've been guessing that most of these attacks have been DDPR because we haven't really said like what attacks they actually are. Beer felt a small satisfaction at the small cut in his opponent's ear. The feeling was short-lived, however, when the humandrel slashed the air right in front of him. Beer wanted to do a dodge, but he was starting to feel sluggish. Yeah, he's been fighting for a while. He did a lot of attacks. Only managed to get it partly out of the way. The air slash cutting a gash through Beer's left pants leg. Pant leg, should be. Left pant leg. The leg bleed quite a bit. Shit. While being distracted by that, Beer failed to notice the new attack coming towards him. Wind blowing him back and making him fall on his back. Crap, this is getting tiring. Beer rolled to the left and shot to his feet. Choosing that moment to throw the stick he had held in his left hand towards the human angel's face, right in the middle of his nose. Then all Beer could do was stand there and pant. <laughs> He's getting real tired. <clears throat> While being too busy spinning my swords, I don't notice the flying 
the flying stick towards me until the last moment. Seeing it, I try to block it using my swords, but I can't. But I cat it close to, but catch it close to my face. And some of the stick hit my face anyway, leaving my face scratched and full of needles. I stop spinning my swords and charge at you in rage, swinging my swords from left to right, screaming, just die already. I feel like <laughs> Peter's like really out of breath and tired, but for some reason Bubbles isn't and kind of probably should be. <laughs> You'd think I had more endurance than this, but not really, huh? I really sh let, me, let me check his stamina. He's got 22 stamina, so that's a decent amount. I really should have done something else. Um, unless, like, uh, Bubbles is like 30 stamina. I don't think he should be having as easy of the time as he is. I really should have done something else than ran up that tree back then at full sprint. Peter wasn't on his last legs. He'd felt worse than this, but his limit was somewhat not that far off in the distance. Peter watched as the sticky throne flew towards the spinning swords of bubbles getting destroyed some, but at the same time, severed into small splinters lodging itself in the commander's face. Okay, so that's a good explanation to why it didn't do that much damage. Uh, he got enraged and started running at Beer with both swords. Just die. Beer chose not to run. It wasn't feasible that he could outrun his opponent while he was feeling such fatigue. This makes sense. On top of that, he had an injured leg. So Beer did what he had, thought in his mind was a good idea. He blocked the right sword coming at him with his own sword, sparks flying. He grabbed the left sword, coming down with his bare left hand. Ow. Fitting the sword cut deep into his hand, and blood starting to trickle down the opponent's sword, staining it red. Beer then tries to headbutt his opponent, knowing it would probably wouldn't do much damage. But at least the splinters lodged there would get pressed further in. I kind of think that the sword grab should be like a technique. Like, it's not easy to grab a sword, you know? You should have had like a custom technique that allows you to grab it. Having splinters going deeper in me obviously hurt, but that makes me angry. I try to push Beer downward with, with my head and upper body, while at the same time I push my sword deeper in his arm, screaming in anger in the process. Having managed to headbutt the humandrel, Beer was hoping it would back off. Instead, it pushed forward, and Beer could feel him sliding backwards in the grass lately. This is not my finest moment. Why do I always have to end up bruised and battered? Why am I even here? What's the point of this damn fight? I like a good fight, sure, but this is too much. I just want to sleep. I want to eat. I want to go somewhere I'm not forced to breathe humantral breath. <laughs> it always smells bad. Why the hell did I become a, a Revo? Well, I do know why, but why did that blasted CP agent have to see me help a Revo? Hmm, okay. I didn't know the guy I helped was a Revo, and suddenly the CP agent starts screaming bloody murder at the top of his lungs. And then I get shot at. I had to run. All that damned loony. Why did you be so damn honorable and help me? I came to the Revolutionary Army being carried by you. Then I went with the flow. Should I stop him with the flow? I don't think so. That would be weak. I made a promise not to quit. Flashback starts now. Okay. So you're just thinking about the flashback before. This is a story set one year back. Beer had been in the Revolutionary Army for six months and experience, and the experience was terrible. <laughs> He's tired, out of breath, he ached, but somehow he never left. Kind of like the army. He also believed that he was, that he was well known and, yeah, that he was well known and it would be dangerous for him to go back. Truth of the matter was, he was a big nobody and him returning would pose minimal risk. But Beer didn't know that. But his progress was lackluster. He couldn't manage to learn how to use his sword properly. He was always beaten. There was one such time where he was especially torn up, crawling out of the battlefield that had been set up on a remote place for a young Revo to gain experience. Blood was oozing. He almost couldn't see with all the blood trickling in his eyes. <laughs> and then he, re then he heard some someone come walking towards him. The person started to talk. <laughs> You're looking miserable, that's for sure. You want me to carry you? Beer was already feeling lightheaded and a little angry, so he answered. No, I don't want you to carry me. It's my own fault. I'm in this sorry state. And if you're done making fun of me, I'd rather crawl back to my room and sleep. I'm an idiot. The other man laughed again. <laughs> well, I won't deny that you're an idiot. <laughs> Little mouth. 
but I don't think you're an idiot for the same reasons you do. You know there's something both stupid and admirable about the way you fight. You take risks, and if you win, that's great. But if you acquire wounds, you keep going until you drop. I like that. I'd like it more if you had some more power to back up such resolve, though. I heard you're always down on yourself and down on yourself self-worth. Stop that. You're important to the Revolutionary Army, and that makes you important to me. So don't give up and don't die on me. Just get stronger. Having said that, the man must have gone down on one knee because suddenly Beer felt a cloth wipe blood away from his eyes. Then the same cloth was bound around Beer's forehead, preventing more blood from seeping in his eyes again. When Beer looked up, the man was already walking away. He was blonde, just like Beer, with a top hat on his head. Beer thought he knew the answer, but he still asked, Who are you? The man waved his hand at Beer without turning back. <gasps> Sabo? Oh. Flashed back over. Beer was standing there while, smile while smelling the angel's breath. Well, I've come this far while getting myself almost chopped to pieces. A little more wouldn't hurt. And with that, Beer shifted his sword away so the Humandrel's sword cut into his body. Then Beer attempted to shove his sword tip towards the Humandrel's throat. Okay, so he's like sacrificing himself to deal some more damage here. I'm angry and tired to react to the attack. The only thing I have time to do is quickly move to dodge the attack, but I'm not fast enough to do so. Completely. And so instead of the swords cutting my throat, it hits me in the chin, cutting hard. How, which direction is he striking from? Is it a pierce or a slash? So I'm to shove his sword tip off. So it's a, it's a pierce, man. You're not gonna... If you get pierced through the chin... I don't know. Eh, you might die from that. Depends Depends how deep the sword goes. I guess Beer's pretty tired, so maybe not. Sword cutting my throat. It hits me in the chin, cutting it hard. Blood starts driving from it and hurts like hell. Feeling the pain, I go into a rage and attack you while tornado of sword strikes, not paying attention to anything, putting everything I have into it. It's kind of hard to gauge like <laughs> how much energy he's putting into this stuff. I guess he's not really saying how much bubbles isn't really saying how much stamina he has left or like anything like that. So. Beer was at his wit's end. His attack had failed. It only nicked uh, Anryoxo's cheek, doing no real damage. And no, it pierced his chin, I'm pretty sure. Then the Humandro was upon Beer once again, sword strikes coming from the right. Beer blocked those with his own sword, feeling himself bleed out from the wound. He took recently on his side. His left hand was struggling to keep hold of the opponent's blade, and having been made slippery from Beer's own blood. Cool, that makes sense. Truth be told, Beer didn't want Beer didn't have the strength left to keep holding it either way. You're one savage humanity, you aren't you? <laughs> the last sounds were Beer's laboring breath as he struggled. Suddenly his left hand lost grip, and the tornado slashes really descended on the revolutionary. Two slashes hit Beer in his left shoulder and arm, respectively. Seeing no way to block it all, Beer threw himself on his back and rolled to the right and got to his knees. Brandishing his sword with both hands, he tries to do a horizontal swipe at on Ryuxa's ankles. Oh. Ah! I got the leg injured and the arms injured. I guess it's going to be tough to do anything at this point. I don't know. I'm not sure if he should even be attacking. Because I've been in a rage and really tired, the attack comes almost completely out of nowhere for me, and so the attack connects with my ankles. Blood quickly starts coming out of them, and I start to lose balance and scream from pain. But before falling down, I do a downward pound into beer with both swords, powering, powered by nothing but rage and adrenaline. Okay, so we both had energy. And the whole world was still. It's not a new experience for beer. He knew for what it was now. Too much blood loss, eh? Damn bastard got me good. Beer had no strength left to move. The various aches and pains were too much. But I got him. I got him. He's falling, and he's going to hit me, of course. Since Beer had nowhere to go, he planted his sword on the ground. So bubble, f so as bubbles fell down, Beer's sword would pierce his right flank. Okay, it's like the side of his body. But of course, since that was the case, Beer knew. He knew. I think that's supposed to be uh, like an exclamation. Beer knew. He knew. He would have. He would have to endure some more pain. And pain came. The Emmanuel's two swords sliced at his left and right shoulder. Oh. And pain came. And pain came. There should be no comma there. And pain came when the Emmanuel's two swords sliced at his left and right shoulder. Just fall a bit more and I'll have myself a new guard for my sword.
I am screaming and continue to falling at Peter, pushing my swords deeper into him, my seeing red in anger, until I feel something poking into my shoulder. After that, I just started dealing horrible pain in my right shoulder. It hurts so much that I lose grip of my right arm. Dropping the sword in my left arm. Dropping the sword. My left arm is starting to shake, knowing that I can't keep this up. I use all the last strength to fall on beer and attempt to crush him laying on the ground, the second sword in the process. So he's just going to fall on him. That's a, that's a strat, all right. Bubbles was coming down. Beer had nowhere to go but back, but he was too busy holding his sword upright. Seeing the folly of this, Beer let go of his sword, hoping it would sink deeper into the creature. And while both his opponent's swords were stuck in his shoulder, he started to move his torso backwards. While pushing his legs forwards out from beneath him, he was now sitting on his ass, feeling the weight of the humandrel bearing down on him. He tried to drag himself backwards, pushing against the ground with both arms, his shoulders aching and bleeding profusely. His left arm was bleeding, and truth be told, with the wound in his left hand from holding the humandrel's sword earlier, ached as the grass and dirt was pushed into the wound. That will leave an infection. I'll have to take care of that later. Damn, why is this guy so heavy? Then Beer was out. He pushed himself backwards until his back was resting against a tree, knowing he didn't really have anything left in the tank. I kind of, I kind of forgot you guys were near the trees. I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. <laughs> knowing he didn't really have anything left in the tank, Beer lifted up his right arm up, feeling tendons and other muscles tear apart because of the sword sticking out from his right shoulder. Uh, hmm. That's a, that's pretty crazy, like actually being able to lift your arm after your shoulder is like that damage. You might not even be able to lift it. Then he gripped the sword and continued in counting, counting to tree. Then he gripped the sword and I think counting on the tree ripped it, ripped it out. The pain was excruciating. Beer howled. Ah! Putting a lump in his throat, Beer let out an audible sob. <laughs> it lasted for half a minute, then Beer started to started ahead saying enough this is enough enough this is enough i don't want to fight anymore i'm tired more so than i thought was possible go away or i'll find a way to kill you having said that be raided himself deciding that if his opponent wanted to continue he would let loose another yakodiri yeah, oh yakodori beer doubted that he could use it completely it would probably be reduced to around 30 percent of his former power but it was all beer could manage I kind of feel like you guys shouldn't even be able to fight anymore. This is kind of like getting getting to the point where it's like you guys are like cut shoulders and like cut legs and it's like how are you even moving at this point? After falling down on beer I noticed that I can't feel my legs anymore. The upper part of my body is in full panic after a sword pierced a sword piercing me whole. Having a sword pierce a hole through me. I do nothing for the next five minutes. Wow, okay. I am able to hear what Beer says and answer, and no, I am still able to fight. These is not over. While saying that, I crawl towards you, <laughs> crawl towards you using my left arm, leaving a trail of blood after me. This is, this is making more sense. He can't even move his right arm because of the pierce. Uh, scratching myself towards you inch by inch until I had enormous pain. I raise my left arm and then stop at midway. I passed out, but my arm still remains arisen. Beer watched as the broken down humanity dragged himself forward. No, please stay away, man. Don't make me move again. Beer could feel the horror rising in him. Don't come. Please don't come. Beer was watching. He knew he had to act. He lifted up his right arm. See, I don't think you should be able to lift up your right arm with your shoulder cut. It doesn't really make any sense. Feeling the wind currents around him, surrounding his blade, surrounding his blade almost, with all Beer's aches, he thought the wind was caressing him. What a strange sensation. Is this just my delusion from blood loss? A spear was about to bring down his blade. Bubbles fell down and laid still. Beer could scarcely believe it. He could not fathom that it was over. This luck had been good this time. I won? <laughs> I won. He sat there for what could have been seconds or maybe minutes or hours, perhaps days. He was dizzy enough that he was sure... I think he would have died if it was days. <laughs> He was dizzy enough that he was sure he wouldn't, even if his hours he might have died, he was sure he wouldn't even notice the change in the seasons. After what felt like an eternity, though, it couldn't have been that long. The Andrew was still laying there. I'll do this right. Maybe, perhaps, I don't know. Looney, Sky Cogger, give me strength. Saying this much out loud, Beer knew 
He couldn't go back down from this. Slowly, carefully, he let go of one of the swords he was holding in his right, then reached up to the blade in his left arm, gripping the handle. Then he had to wait a minute again. He was feeling vertigo overcome him. When it passed, Beer gritted his teeth and yanked the sword out, sparing his left shoulder, much of the damage that had done to his right. It was still mangled, not just broken from within, blood's not just as broken from within. Blood spurted out, and suddenly Beer threw up in his lap. <sighs> Look at me, I'm a mess. <laughs> he was now holding the sword in his right, but he couldn't stay there. He moved he moved it over in his left. Ripped the sword, laying on the ground with his right. He then started to move himself forward, laying down on his stomach and getting the legs up behind him. Then he started to crawl, leaving a trail of blood and spew in the grass. I'll do this much at least, though I'm forever selfish, no matter who my allies are. Arm over arm, leg over leg, meter over meter, Beer crawled while holding both swords until he was back where his enemy lay. Probably passed out. These are yours, and you could have them back. Thanks for letting me hold on to them for a little while. <laughs> With that, Beer let go of the swords and laid them in the Kimmerdal's side. But this one, this one's mine. I'm not going to give it to anyone. Here was, of course, talking about one of his own sword, or his own sword, that was still buried in the bubbles, probably in his shoulder. And with much difficulty, because he managed to pry from the body, he resheathed it and then he tried to stand up. He couldn't. On top of that, he threw up again. But thankfully, he averted puking on the humantral. <laughs> what followed this was an incredibly slow crawling journey that Beer forced himself through until he was at the end of the island where a boat stood and people ran to him, helping him and half carrying him on board. The last thing Beer thought as the island disappeared was, at least this time, I could leave with my head held high, Sabo. Cool. Yeah, some, some final thoughts. I'd just say that you guys definitely took way more damage than you should have been able to take. Um, kind of seemed like it was a little crazy in that regard. Um, um, let's see, I think for Anryoksa I would have liked if you described how you attacked a bit better, you kind of left Beer to do it for you, and for Beer I would say, yeah there were just some of those times where you did too many actions in one turn, yeah, cool, cool fight though.